I believe the person who invented the newspapers and heralded the coming of the media had good intentions for the creation. The news and the media are supposed to serve as a nonpartisan interrogators of man, and that includes politicians. The media is supposed to be nonpartisan, and by that I mean not affiliated to any party, especially the party in power, so that they would equally deliver judgment upon whichever politician or political leader goes against the will of the people. But in Canada, it is unfortunate that the journalists belonging to the mainstream media and the mainstream media itself have sold themselves to the government in power, thereby forgoing the search for truth and breaking an unwritten law in the sphere of journalism. On Thursday, Justin Trudeau called for a real reckoning on Hockey Canada after allegations came out that a woman was sexually assaulted by eight hockey players in the year 2018. While Trudeau was talking about Hockey Canada should be displaying a level of transparency, accountability and understanding of the situation that they are currently faced with, None of the reporters present at the Nova Scotia press conference had the guts to challenge him by asking what he had done with the sexual assault allegations leveled against himself and some members of his Liberal Party. Even the online reporters from the legacy media kept hush as Trudeau rambled on. This is just a tip of the ice of what would happen when Bill C-11 becomes law. In the unfortunate possibility that that happens, we can kiss the truth goodbye for what it's worth. Before we move further, I would like to reiterate that this channel remains committed to bringing you the latest news updates without the abundant and ill-concealed hypocrisy of the left-wing and legacy media. We are dedicated to bringing you the truth that the mainstream media would be happy to hide from you. Since we love to hear from viewers, it would please us immensely if you leave all your comments and observations in the comment section below. Because what would be all over the media will be lies crafted and molded to suit the government and Trudeau and present a beautiful false image of him to the public. Imagine a country where the news can no longer be trusted, and the media is in the hands of the government in power. It would be disastrous in every manner of the word. But then, it is the legacy media. The same media that has accepted and received more than half a million Canadian dollars in funding from Trudeau, for keeping their mouths shut and looking the other way while Trudeau messed with the country and Canadians. I am ashamed that this is what legacy media is presenting journalism and journalists as, like people who write for the highest bidder thereby throwing truth out of the window. Trudeau's government and himself have been saddled with a lot of sexual allegations and of course nothing was done about them. In 2018, the same year that the woman alleged that she was sexually assaulted by eight hockey players, Trudeau was accused of the very same thing. The incident was said to have happened in the year 2000 when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was 28 years old, and it was at a Cockney summit in Creston, British Columbia. The summit was raising funds for the Avalanche Foundation which Trudeau became a part of after his brother, Mitchell unfortunately died in an avalanche in 1998. After the event, an unsigned Crescent editorial appeared in the papers, accusing Justin Trudeau of groping a female reporter and sexually assaulting her. The editorial, which had appeared in the Crescent Valley Advance, mentioned that Trudeau had offered an apology of sorts after the incident. I do not feel that I acted inappropriately uh, in any way, uh, but I respect uh, the fact that someone else might have experienced that differently. Justin Trudeau's tone today has noticeably changed from just a few days ago. I had a, a good day that day. I don't remember any uh, negative interactions that day at all. That kind of lawyerly language was criticized, with some saying they just didn't buy his answer. The allegation dates back to a BC festival in August of 2000, well before Trudeau entered politics. The next day, an unsigned editorial appeared in the local newspaper, the Creston Valley Advance. It accused Trudeau of groping and inappropriately handling an unnamed young female reporter. There were no other specifics about the alleged physical contact. The editorial says when Trudeau was asked about the incident, he responded, I'm sorry, if I had known you were reporting for a national paper, I never would have been so forward. If I uh, apologized later, then it would be because I sensed that she was not entirely comfortable with the interaction we had. The woman told CBC News that she doesn't want to comment on this story or have her name associated with it. But the newspaper's publisher from that time says she remembers speaking with the reporter after the incident and that she was upset by it. She also believes that the reporter wrote the editorial herself. Me too. Time's up. The Women's March. A groping allegation would be uncomfortable for any politician, but it is a particular challenge to Trudeau's reputation as an avowed feminist, one who has said he takes a zero-tolerance approach to sexual harassment. I don't feel was in any way untoward. Today, but trying to quell time, questions, he leaned in to that feminism. And I'll be blunt about it, often a man experiences an interaction as being benign 
are not inappropriate, and a woman, uh, particularly in a professional context, can experience it differently, and we have to respect that and reflect on that. Trudeau was asked twice today if he'd launch an investigation into his own behavior, just like he has for other MPs and staff facing allegations. He dodged both questions. He did say, though, he'd keep reflecting on how people can perceive an interaction differently. The prime minister had said that if he had known the lady was on an assignment, he would not have been so forward with her, thus admitting that he might have done what he was accused of. But like the politician he is, he backtracked on his alleged apology, saying that he had been reflecting on the incident and whether or not he gave an apology. He said then that if he had given an apology, it was because he sensed that she had a different experience of what had transpired between them. My turn. I came real early. It's like rush seats at a rock concert. I just want to get your reaction. It's hard to read this to a statement made by the person involved where she says uh, that the incident referred to in the editorial did occur as reported. Mr. Trudeau did apologize the next day. I did not pursue the incident at that time and will not be pursuing the incident further. I've had no subsequent contact with Mr. Trudeau before or after he became Prime Minister. And then she says, uh, the debate, if it continues, will continue without my involvement. So could you please uh, give a reaction to that? Obviously, uh, over the past uh, weeks uh, since this uh, uh, news resurfaced, um, I've been uh, reflecting, we've all been reflecting on on past behaviors, and as I've said, I have, uh, I'm confident that I did not act inappropriately, but I think the essence of this is that people can experience interactions differently, and part of the lesson we need to learn uh, in this time of collective awakening uh, is uh, a level of respect and understanding for the fact that uh, people, in many cases, uh, women, experience interactions in professional contexts and other contexts differently than men. I apologized uh, in the moment uh, because I had obviously perceived that she had uh, experienced it in a different way than I acted or I experienced it. And I think this reflection as we move forward needs to uh, continue uh, in our communities, in our places of power, in our places of work. Uh, there is an awakening going on and uh, uh, we need to take opportunities to continue to reflect on it. This is something that I've been uh, involved in for well over 20 years in my student activism and in, uh, in the outreach that I've done. Uh, and there's always more to do and more to reflect on. How do you feel though about the fact that she's now issued a statement saying She's not going to be involved in any of the further, she's not going to be involved in any stories going forward, and nor does she want to pursue this in any way. How do you feel about that? As I've said from the very beginning, I would never presume to uh, speak for her or to have a perspective on how she f should feel or should act on this. I, I, uh, I respect uh, very much uh, her her right and her ability to make choices about what uh, what is best for her and her family uh, and I obviously uh, uh, will continue to uh, stand as a as a defender of, of uh, understanding and respect for uh, individuals and the experiences they go through. Valerie Bourne was a publisher of the Crescent Valley Advance at that time and also the former co-worker of the said reporter. She recalled that during that time, the unnamed female journalist was distressed following her interaction with Trudeau. Bourne said that her recollections of the conversation were that the reporter came to her because she was unsettled by what had happened. She'd also talked about the reporter's confusion on how best to pursue the matter because the person involved was known to the Canadian community. Another incident of sexual assault which happened in Trudeau's government was with Raj Saini, who once stood for re-election to represent Kitchen Centre. News at that time in 2021 was that Raj Saini had sexually assaulted female staffers, and this news flooded in from seven sources corroborating four different incidents. One of these incidents made its way to the Canadian Human Rights Commission in 2020, and the commission expressed their disappointment that the Liberal Party chose to field him as a candidate with the sexual assault allegations against him. Saini, of course, denied the allegations. But that's not the end of this very incident. 
An unnamed female employee said that the sexual assault from Saini was so severe that she contemplated taking her own life in his office on March 2020. She talked about how devastating the situation had been for her, bearing the knowledge of what she had faced at the hands of Saini and knowing that that could happen to other females like she was of immense concern to her. But Trudeau, despite all that, came out to campaign for Saini, saying that Saini had shared details of rigorous processes. Recall that in the year 2018, Trudeau had said, in an interview, that women who come out with sexual allegations should be listened to, supported, and believed. And he was confident that no woman would accuse him of inappropriate behavior or sexual assault. He claimed that he had been very careful all his life and had aimed to be thoughtful and respectful of people's space and people's headspace as well. These are allegations that are known to the reporters of the mainstream media, but none of them challenged Trudeau about them while he played Saint in the Hockey Canada case. On Twitter, Canada Proud, which is a conservative advocacy group, challenged Rachel Gilmore, who is a global news reporter over the media, ignoring Trudeau's handling of sexual assault scandals. I cannot imagine what Canada would be when Bill C-11 passes, when the news coming from the legacy media would be the only form of information we would get from the government, when the legacy media would choose not to question Trudeau and his government for their past involvements in scandals while they, the government, question another for something similar. I dread such a time because with that bill goes the extinction of freedom of speech and the truth that comes with it, leaving us at the mercy of Trudeau and his mainstream media. What do you think about the legacy media choosing not to open Trudeau's cupboards at the Nova Scotia press conference? Please leave your comments on the question down in the comments section as well as your observations on the video in general so we can know where and how to improve to better suit you. Please like our video and subsequent ones, subscribe if you haven't or you are still new to the channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Thanks for staying with us.